Since becoming a full-time artist, my relationship with creativity has changed. Passion turned to pressure and joy turned to overwhelming stress. So at the beginning of July, I decided to go on a one month journey to try to heal my relationship with my creativity. For each day in July, I set the goal to create one thing on my old scraps of paper to nurture my love for creativity and a willingness to show up to it consistently. So in week one, we started at ground zero. The idea was to simply spark some joy in my creative practice again, to grab some random supplies and a scrap of paper and just make something. And if you watched the first video in this series, you'll know it went well. I was really excited, very motivated, and I was really starting to have some fun with my art again. I'd started weeding the garden of my creative practice and planting some new seeds. But although I'd weeded out some of the negative mindsets I had toward my creativity, there was still a lot of really hard work to do. A lot of deep-rooted weeds, if you will. I still had a lot of very limiting beliefs. Limiting belief number one, I shouldn't explore different subjects in my art. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you've probably seen me create a lot of different things. I love exploring my Miraki Meadow characters and environments. I love painting food. I love sculpting. I've painted gnomes and potted plants and yogis and dragons in frickin' soup. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm a very big nerd and I enjoy learning about things and then exploring them in my artwork. But over the past few years of taking my art full time, I've tried to force myself into a niche. One of the major pieces of advice most often given to artists taking their careers full time is stick to a style or find your niche. And I think that is a very vague and very harmful thing to tell a creative person especially for the ones like me who just love to explore. Now, not every artist is like that. You know, some artists find joy in only painting or drawing flowers or people or pet portraits, and that's absolutely okay too. But there are a lot of artists out there who find joy in the exploration of many, many different things. And to limit them to picking one subject or style is very creatively crippling. So in the first video, I mentioned that I started doing some more pen sketches. I've done some of these in the past, but I'd kind of let my pens collect dust for a little while. But during this month, I discovered that doing some sketches with these pens was a really great warm up for me. It loosened up my muscles, helped me practice making marks, and just put me in a more artsy headspace. So before I would start on my daily intention piece, I guess you could call it, I would grab my pens and my little sketchbook and just do a few little doodles, sometimes from reference and sometimes from imagination. I started off with some books, um, just playing around with turning them in space or stacking them on top of one another. I explored different line variations and weights and marks. I was having fun with these pressure-free warm-up sketches. And then a new illustration idea came to mind. It was something that I haven't really explored before and truthfully didn't feel like I should explore now because it wasn't what I typically do. So I had the idea to illustrate like a little forest girl wearing a bird skull bending over to inspect a coyote track. Weirdly specific, I know, but I just couldn't get the idea out of my head for several days. But all of these negative and limiting thoughts started swirling around my head. What will my audience think of this piece? It's not exactly the cozy vibes I'm known for. If I sketched it in ink, would anyone even recognize it as mine since it's not in gouache? If I made a print of it, would it even sell? At this point, I literally hadn't even sketched it out and I was already worried about all of the negative impact it could have on my art business. But then I thought, what's the purpose of this challenge? What is the goal of this intention? Isn't the point to create whatever I want? To nurture my creativity, not my business. And that's when the belief that I shouldn't explore a new subject just shattered. I realized that if I truly wanted to nurture my creativity, I had to let go of that belief. So I grabbed my sketchbook and pens and started practicing some bird skulls. I found some really great photos on Pinterest to learn from and started familiarizing myself with the structure. 
the way the top beak overlaps the bottom, um, the cool hole shapes of like the nasal cavity, the way the skull dips in along the eye socket and creates like these really cool curves and shadow shapes. I started to understand this new subject better, but more importantly, I started finding the beauty in it and the joy in drawing it. So on this day, I brought my idea to life. This little forager with her bird skull and her satchel. I was so genuinely excited to explore this idea and make it into an illustration that it didn't really matter to me anymore if anyone else would like it or if I'd even show it to anyone else at all. You know, the piece, it's a little weird, <laughs> a little quirky, doesn't really match the art that I typically share on social media, and you know what? I couldn't care less. <laughs> I felt such genuine joy for the act of creating while I was making it, and that felt really good. So on the next day, I went back to a familiar subject and familiar medium, painting bits in gouache. I had painted bubbles the first week, and I wanted to have a little illustration of bits to go along with it. Y'all know, I love cozy things. <laughs> I love finding the joy and coziness in the things that we don't really often appreciate, like folding laundry or doing the dishes, or in this case, grocery shopping. Illustrating quiet little moments like this helped me to see the good in my own life and really appreciate those little things. So when I had the random urge to paint a grocery bag full of carrots, I, I went with it. <laughs> During the first week of this intention, I was very motivated as we so often are at the beginning of a new challenge or goal we've set for ourselves. But even so, there was very much still an underlying I'm doing this because I have to meet my intention kind of mindset. Yes, I was excited to be making some art, but there was also an element of I need to mark this off my to-do list. But during the second week, as the initial excitement kind of began to wear off a little bit, I noticed that I was actually itching to create something most days. I genuinely wanted to make something. I wasn't just showing up because it was on the to-do list, but because I had the urge to be creative. Week one sparked the joy, but week two was building on it and really nurturing that love for creativity. As I was pulling out the weeds of comparing myself to other artists, um, believing that I shouldn't explore other subjects or mediums or styles, and believing that art was a chore rather than a passion, I started to find myself truly falling in love with the creative practice again. I was excited to show up for my creativity, not just my intention, if that makes sense. <laughs> just popping in with a word from our sponsor, me. If you're a fan of all things cozy, come check out my shop. From prints to stickers to keychains and magnets, there's literally something for every cozy creative. And if you're more of a curious creative, I also have a course on developing your own illustrations and a workbook on nurturing your own creative practice up in my shop as well. And as always, every order is Amy Jane approved. So without further ado, let's get back to creating. As the second week went on, I visited another familiar character, the little tomato girl. I will name her eventually, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> She's been showing up in my art for several years now, and I still haven't gotten around to a name, so we'll see. <laughs> Anywho, this brought me to another limiting belief. Limiting belief number two, I shouldn't explore different mediums. So I'd started kind of tackling this one a little bit in week one, and again with the bird skull piece, but it was definitely still present in my mind. Y'all know, I love gouache. It's my favorite medium. Um, no other medium makes me feel the way I do when I paint with gouache. But <laughs> I do love other mediums too. I love the way an ink drawing of a character looks different than a pencil sketch of the same character. I love the difference between the way a painting looks and the way a marker illustration looks. I love the difference in how you hold a pen versus how you hold a brush. I love exploring different mediums. And I needed to ask myself, have I been painting with gouache because I truly love to and that's what I want to do the most of, or because I believe I need to pick one medium and stick with it? Upon further investigation and some creative soul searching, I did realize that I truly do love painting with gouache, and I reach for it most because I love it most. But this challenge has helped me see that it's very important for me to also allow myself space and time to explore other mediums too that exploration is a huge part of nurturing my own creativity. 
So I decided to begin exploring the Tomato Girl in a variety of different mediums, starting with multiliner pens. I'd originally intended to turn it into a pen and marker illustration, but once I finished with the pen part, I realized I just wanted to keep it the way it was. My instincts were telling me that adding the marker was going to make it lose the magic, so I decided to just trust my instinct. On that same day, I started the Fiona's Flavors illustration, which if you watched that video, you know I was very, very nervous to start sketching. But because I trusted my creative instincts with the pen drawing, I felt a lot more confident going into the sketching process for that one and trusting my instincts with it. I could trust that I had good taste, that I knew when to stop and move on to the next part of the process, um, that I could come up with something that I genuinely liked. I think those little moments of trusting your creative intuition, they, they build on one another. They make you braver going into the next piece and braver in the piece after that. So for the next few days, I also explored colored pencils and graphite pencils for the Tomato Girl, and it was really interesting to see how she differed from medium to medium. When I draw her in pen, I tend to focus more on angles and line weight, but when I sketch her with pencils, she comes out a little bit softer and squishier, I guess. With pens, she feels a lot more active, and with pencils, she feels more cozy. Maybe that's just me projecting onto the character how I'm feeling when I use those specific mediums. I don't know. <laughs> but that brings me to the other major limiting belief. Number three, I should stick to one style. So for a long time, I've been really frustrated that I struggle to keep a consistent style. I feel like the style of the Meadow characters is relatively honed in now, but drawing people? <laughs> Absolutely not. Very, very rarely do I draw the tomato girl the same way twice. But I think exploring her design with different mediums throughout this month really helped me start to overcome the mindset that she has to look the same every single time. Spoiler alert, when using different mediums between pieces, the outcomes are going to look different. <laughs> Seems obvious to anyone with eyes, but I had a really hard time getting that point across in my own brain. The pen drawing will have a different effect than the painting, and that's okay. In some pieces, the tomato girl's nose might be a little farther up, or her hair a bit longer, or her proportions a bit pudgier. And I started to realize that maybe that's okay too. Maybe for me and my art, it's less about having a consistent design and more about the effect I want each specific piece to have. Because sometimes I want her to have that softer and cozier look, and other times I want her to look more angular and dynamic. Honestly, the style belief is still something I'm struggling with, but I think I am learning to let go of it slowly but surely. <laughs> I did have a few more moments of frustration during this week compared to the first one. So for the colored pencil sketch, I struggled quite a bit with the pose, and with the graphite sketch, I struggled a lot with the eyes. But I think that was a good reminder that frustration and joy can be a part of the same practice. It's not always going to be one or the other. Sometimes it is, but more often than not, they're both present off and on throughout the process and I'm learning that it's okay for them to coexist. So for the journal page on the day of the graphite sketch, I wrote, Today was a reminder that the creative practice can be difficult. Your art won't always come out the way you want it to, and that's okay. But you have to keep coming back to the practice. You can't give up on your creativity when you're having a rough day. It's okay to let it go for the moment, but don't let it sit stagnant forever. Frustration is very common for artists. Sometimes you get a little too frustrated and overwhelmed and you need to take a break for a moment or even for the rest of the day. And I think that's where it's so crucial that we have grace on ourselves and remember that we're not perfect people and we aren't perfect artists either. Sometimes the pose is tricky or the anatomy is beyond our skill set. Sometimes the perspective just looks weird and you can't figure out why. And sometimes for no apparent reason, you're just struggling that day but you show up again the next day because it's important to you. Because your creativity is worth it. Because maybe tomorrow you do make something you love. Maybe tomorrow you explore something and find that it's your new favorite thing. You keep showing up for your art, not just to it. But we'll talk more about that in one of the next videos. 
So one of the words that came up a lot in my week review journal pages for week two was filled. These simple moments of creativity were even more fulfilling for me than they were the first week. Even though I had a few sessions that were a little bit more frustrating, my creative practice as a whole was very, very fulfilling. Instead of each session depleting my creative energy, they were filling me up and they gave me more to pour out in the next sessions. So one of my favorite questions in the weekly review pages is how has your creative practice improved this week? So this was my answer for week two. I feel less pressured to stick to a style. I'm simply having fun making things and not worrying about whether it's quote unquote my thing or my medium. So as I began to let go of all these limiting beliefs and mindsets, I began to find a lot more joy in my art again. One of the things I'm learning is that my creativity has to come before my career. For years, I let outside influences or opinions or even thoughts that I was projecting onto other people, I let those things snuff out why I made art in the first place. Joy. The joy of making. The joy of exploring. Playtime in my creative practice is very, very crucial for me. And I can't let the paycheck be more important than the playtime, if that makes sense. So by the end of week two, I was definitely starting to see and feel the healing of my relationship with my creativity. But there was still a very, very long road ahead. I had three more weeks of this challenge left, and I was going to start facing a lot of really big battles. But we'll get to those in the next videos. If you're wondering where the other two pieces are from this week, I didn't film the process for those, so you'll be seeing those in the final video where we'll take a little tour through all the pieces and wrap up what I learned, um, what you can take from my experiences throughout this month, and how this is all impacting my creative practice going forward. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me about letting go of limiting beliefs and watching me explore some new ideas and different mediums. This was such a fun week for me, and I hope you had fun coming along for it. Huge thank you to the Cozy and Curious Creatives over on Patreon for helping to support my art journey. It's been a bit of a wild ride, and I'm so excited to have you guys along for it. If you're looking for a cozy little sketchbook session, then head on over to watch this video next. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye guys!